Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're going to be covering the cloud computing bachelor's degree from WGU. I had a bunch of requests to do this, so I thought I might as well go ahead and do it. But I'm particularly excited about this because the Azure track of this degree program maps really well with my current job. So I want to kind of compare the, the certs with my job and like see exactly how well it lines up later in the video. So just so you know what to expect, I'm going to do a really brief overview of WGU just in case people don't know what it is. I'll do a brief explanation of the new cloud computing program. We're going to be doing like a, a deep dive visual diff between today's cloud computing program and the previous cloud computing program at WGU to kind of see exactly like what they changed. And in the new cloud computing degree, there's three separate tracks, there's an Azure track, an AWS track, and then a mixed cloud track. And then we'll be doing diff comparisons between all three of those so we can see exactly like what's different between the three tracks. I'll also talk about how you might save a little bit of money if you decide to go with one of these programs. Programs. And then we're going to look at the individual certs for the Azure track and then see how they line up with my current job. I'm a, I guess, a cloud automation engineer slash software engineer. Um, I work at Microsoft. I'm a, a contractor and I work in Azure and I make about 180K. As I was reading through like the Azure track, I was like, wow, this matches with my job really well. So I'm going to kind of go through that in a little bit more depth and see like exactly how well it matches up with my job and like kind of compare what I do in my day to day with the actual certs. And then we're going to kind of talk about like, if it's worth your time to go through with this degree. And I'll, I'll try to quantify in a semi-tangible way that makes sense. Smash that like button, consider subscribing, and let's get started. So super brief overview of WGU. It's essentially an online college. It's accredited. And the way it works is you register and you pay for a term at a time. And one term is six months. So you pay about $3,500 to $4,000 for a six-month time slot. And then you're allowed to complete as many classes as you want in that time period before starting your next term and then doing the next chunk of classes. You essentially do this until you graduate and there's no limit on how many classes you can take in inside of your six month term. So in theory, if you finished all your classes, you would only pay for one term and then you would get a bachelor's degree. It's accredited, it's a legit. I have a whole bunch of videos about it. I have three degrees from this school and I'm, I've had a successful enough career in tech, I guess. So that's WGU, check it out, it's pretty good. So quick overview of the new cloud computing program from WGU. The previous program was pretty good, it had a lot of decent certs in it, but they, they kind of changed it a little bit and they diversified it where you can pick any one of three tracks and they have an Azure track an AWS track and a mixed track. I want to say like, don't get like too caught up if you're considering this degree, like, well, which one should I get? Like AWS or Azure? Like it doesn't, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, a lot of times for especially the entry level ish cloud jobs, as long as you have experience with one cloud, it's really transferable to another cloud. So don't get like analysis paralysis when you're trying to decide like which track to do. Uh, I'm partial to Azure. I just like it more for whatever reason. I don't know why. So if I were doing this, I would pick Azure, but obviously, you know, you can pick whichever one you want and still be successful. So before we start comparing the courses and looking at the diffs, I just wanted to kind of show these spreadsheets a little bit. Check the link in the description. I'll put links for all of this stuff. But basically this spreadsheet, um, if you've watched my videos before, might look a little bit familiar. This first tab down here, this is um, all the cloud computing courses for the Azure track. And this one, as you might guess, is for AWS track. And this one is for the mixed cloud track. So these are basically all the courses for the three tracks. And then I'll, I'll use these to do a diff so we can see exactly what's different between these three courses. So before we get started, I'm going to look at a diff or a comparison between the old cloud computing program and then compare it with the new Azure track here. So this is what we're looking at right here. And again, I'll put a link to this in the description. It's probably tiny to see. So just use the link and then you can kind of blow it up on your own monitor. But on the left side, this is the old cloud computing. And on the right side, this is the new cloud computing, specifically the Azure track. And I won't go too deep into the individual like differences between these two tracks because it's so incredibly different. I'd be talking for quite a long time, but I can do like a really brief overview. You can see like all these classes that are white, this American politics, applied algebra. Um, if they're white on both sides, it means they're both the same and those classes exist in both degrees. Anything dark right over here means it doesn't exist on the other side and anything light or dark green over here means it doesn't exist over here. You can kind of see like a lot of these Azure centric certs which are really exciting to see and they're like really decent certs. So a whole bunch of these as you might expect in the Azure track. There's quite a few overlapping like a lot of the core technology classes and general classes um, they're overlapping like this ethics and technology, integrated physical sciences, etc. So you can just kind of take a look at this a little bit. Um, 
it looks like there is a one less or one fewer class in the new tracks. I'm not really sure. They did quite a bit when they updated the new cloud curriculum. It's it's like 50% different. So next, we're going to look at the new Azure track versus the new AWS track and then do a little comparison there. So this particular spreadsheet on the left, this is the new Azure track. And on the right, this is the new AWS track. You can see between the three tracks, like most of the things are the same, except for, as you might guess, some a few Azure centric certs in the Azure track and then some AWS centric certs in the AWS track. But something I thought was like kind of interesting in, in the AWS track, they have one Azure cert in here for some reason. Um, they have AZ104, which is a good cert, right? Has a provides a pretty good foundation, but um, I just thought that was pretty interesting. So you can see it's like four AWS centric certs, four Azure centric certs, and then one other Azure cert over here. So you can kind of eyeball these. They're pretty much the same, um, but they swapped out the certs, right? And then this one, this is the Azure track versus the multi-cloud track. You can just kind of look at it. There's not really much to say about this. It's missing a couple classes. They swapped out a few classes. No Azure Data Engineer and said they have AWS um, certified solutions to architect. And then the last one we'll kind of look at really quick. Uh, this is the AWS track on the left and then the multi-cloud track on the right. Same thing, not too many differences, just a few classes are different, a few different certs as you might expect. It's kind of a mix between Azure and AWS. So touching on the jobs real quick that you might expect to get with a degree or a search like this, there's quite a few cloud support engineers out there, like especially these days, and they, they pay pretty well. I know a lot of people like in my personal life who have gone from just like normal help desk, maybe making like 50 or 60K, going on to make like over 100K like easily doing cloud support engineering. It's really good. You'll learn a lot of skills. And if you have like at least a bit of cloud centric foundation, it's not that difficult to jump into some of these jobs. Jobs. The only drawback is they're kind of difficult in the sense you can kind of imagine cloud support engineering like you're just doing normal help desk and you're you're you know giving phone support and, and chatting support like you would in a normal help desk, but instead of you know somebody down the hall or some kind of internal customer who needs help fixing their computer, you're instead like dealing with a, an actual like sys admin or a sys engineer working at Costco or some you know Fortune 100 company in there instead of like a little problem being like their computer is slow or something maybe their whole ETL pipeline is broken or some other like crazy large problem that this smart guy on the phone can't fix and it's your job to kind of not necessarily like solve his problem but utilize your resources on your end to kind of build out some kind of solution or you know fix their issue or whatever the case may be it's a little bit high stress I mean it pays really decently like you can for sure negotiate over 100k from making like 50k or less but um, the I feel like a, the stress is like a little bit high because people tend to get burnt out on it just because they don't really go into it with you know the mindset of I'm going to do my my eight hours and then turn my brain off afterwards. It can be kind of nerve wracking, especially if you don't know what you're getting into, but it pays really well, to be honest. And it's a really good gateway into other things like you do cloud support engineering for one year. Maybe you can go be like a field engineer or you can do some kind of like consulting or something like this. It's like a gateway to getting a job that makes a lot more money. There's a lot of opportunity that can be had through working cloud support engineering. It's kind of hard, but it, it pays a decent amount of money. So I'll just kind of explain these spreadsheets super fast here. There's gonna be a bunch of tabs at the bottom. These are essentially all the classes for the Azure track. So at the bottom, there's gonna be a tab for Azure, AWS, and multi-cloud. So these are essentially all the courses from WGU. This is the course ID, and then the course name, of course, the number of units or credits it is. And then this, of course, is the corresponding certificate that you will earn from passing this class, or rather the certificate that you need to get in order to pass the class. And then this column over here is the study.com transfers column, which I'll talk about in a second. You can essentially use these to save some money and potentially some time on getting your degree. Again, I'll explain that in just a second. So you can kind of uh, look through all of these a little bit. I'm going to focus primarily on the Azure track just because I work in Azure, and then I'm going to compare my job with the actual certs in this track in just a second. Um, so basically getting into how you can potentially save money. Again, the way WGU works is you register and then you pay for like a six month term and you can complete as many courses as you can in that six months. But regardless of how many classes you complete, WGU always costs about $3,500 to $4,000 
per six month term. So instead of just hopping right into WGU right away, an alternative strategy that you can do is you can go to places like study.com where you can complete courses for a bit cheaper outside of WGU. And then when you're done doing your courses, you can transfer all of those into WGU and essentially save a bunch of money and potentially some time. So basically, uh, study.com normally costs about $200 a month, but if you use this discount code for 30% off, it's about $160 a month um, if you take two classes per month. So basically, assuming you do like four classes a month, which is like pretty fast from study.com, you'll end up paying about $2,000 in a six month time period versus $3,600 from WGU, and you'll save about 15 or $1,600 that way. If you do two classes a month from study.com for six months, you'll end up saving about $2,400. Uh, if you do that for 12 months, you'll end up saving almost $5,000. So it's pretty significant. Um, it's not required, but it's kind of an okay strategy, especially if you're new to distance learning. You just kind of want to ease into it without a big expense commitment. You can do 200 or 160 to $200 a month at study.com and kind of work on the courses and then transfer them in when you're good and ready to actually enroll at WGU. So what this looks like going back to the Azure tab here, these are all the courses that you need to graduate with the Azure track. Assuming you did all these courses at, at study.com and transfer them in and said, clear these out, you'll have much less classes when you actually go to enroll and do your courses at WGU. And also it is possible to do the actual certs outside of WGU and transfer those into and actually did that with my computer science degree. So what that would look like is something like this. So we clear all these and select blanks and then you only have 11 classes left <laughs> when you actually enroll in WGU. And I don't rec necessarily recommend you do this because you know it's a lot of work and it's kind of nice to have WGU pay for the certs but it's it's a funny thing to do and I did this with my computer science degree. Um, I did as many classes as I could outside and I had some certs too and then when I enrolled I only had 11 classes left and I just like finished the degree in two months. This is really crazy. I don't recommend really trying to do that but I, I did it in this video. You can check that out if you feel like it but that is um, one possibility of things that you can do. I do have this video that goes like in depth of how to use study.com and like how to deal with your transcript and transfer it to WGU and all the things that you might expect. So check out this video. It's pretty in depth and I think it will help a lot and I think if you you're trying to like min max your your money and stuff i would recommend it just like check it out so now consider the azure track and then all the azure centric certs in that track i'm going to kind of go over which portion of those certs actually like line up to the things i actually do in my job again i'm kind of like a cloud automation engineer slash software engineer so like a lot of the stuff in these certs overlaps with my job so i'm just going to kind of go over one of them like on camera like really really quick but there's five certs i'm not going to do all of them on camera but i will include links to all of these in the description where I kind of highlight the different parts that apply to the job that I actually do, if that makes sense. So I'll just um, open this like AZ-104, the Microsoft Azure Administrator, and I'll just kind of scroll through this really quick. Anything in yellow here is like something that I actually do in my job here. And then, oh, I this job pays about 100, 180K. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. So my job is about 180K and then cloud support engineer. You can expect, you know, maybe anywhere from, depending on where you work, like 90k to 110k if that gives some kind of idea i guess of pay so pretty much um i won't read all of these out loud but anything that's yellow is pretty much like what i do in my job again this is az 104 azure administrator so you can just kind of look at this stuff. This is stuff that I've done or i, I actively do or i'm going to do in the very near future and you can see there's like quite quite a bit of overlap. It's quite impressive. A lot of virtual networking. This is like really common stuff um, in Azure. Yeah, that was AZ-104 and then look at AZ-900. AZ-900 is like foundation of Azure things that you need to know. I didn't even highlight this one. I'm not going to scroll through it, but like the, like 90% of this is matched to my job and stuff that I that I actively do. So this, these search are like really good to be honest. But yeah, just te check the description. I'll put all the stuff and I'll label it like really clearly. So check those out if you're curious to see how my job, I guess, matches up with the different certs you would expect to see in the Azure track. And then finally, I'm going to talk about if I think this degree program is worth it. Short 
answer, uh, yeah, I think it's worth it, but let me kind of like elaborate on this a little bit. So I've kind of showed this chart a little bit in some of my other videos. Basically, you can kind of consider this 11 pillars of employment of like the kind of 11 areas that you have to worry about and think about when you're going to try to get a job somewhere. So assuming you don't have anything else and you go into this program and then you come out, these are the kind of personal stats that you might expect to have. These 11 pillars, for example, resume quality, social network, certifications, education, uh, this should be here. And the idea is the higher all of these things are, the easier it will be for you to get good jobs in the future without having to worry too much. So coming straight out of the program, you can kind of expect to have something like this. I would say, um, obviously, like resume quality, portfolio quality, this stuff is like not required for you to graduate with a degree at WGU, but the social network, you'll come out with like a tiny little one, like a C tier, because WGU's social network is like not that good. Whereas if you go to like UC Berkeley or Waterloo or something, probably you'll have a bit of a better network coming out. Experience, this is what you get on the job. Obviously, you won't have any of this, but the certs, I would consider this S tier. Probably this particular degree track is now S tier. Um, I believe it has the whole CompTIA trifecta. I believe it has like Linux certs and then ITIL, and then it has some like really high quality certifications, like, but especially Azure has some really nice certifications. So I would, I would say coming out of this year, certs are probably going to be S tier, like really like top level, nice cert stack on your resume. As far as education, you'll come out with B tier. Um, I would say like, you know, a single bachelor's is like a B tier. A tier might be like a master's and a bachelor's. S tier, maybe double bachelor's and master's or bachelor's and double master's or like PhD or something. Who cares about all of that? B tier is enough for education, right? Um, you'll come out with B tier written communication other because you won't be able to pass your performance assessments, right? If you have less than average written ability, obviously you won't get any of these two things out of WGU. They might have resources for it, but it's not like uh, required, right, for the degree. Um, you'll come out with Mm, depending on your effort and like the legitimacy of your study, you'll come out with like a B tier tech ability or possibly even A tier if you practice enough, but still pretty good. And then of course you need some consistency to actually even get through a WGU degree. So you'll probably come out with some, but this is something you, you need to maintain over time when you're trying to get a job. So coming out with a degree, it's looking like pretty good because these other areas, they're pretty easy to raise as I've talked about in other videos. Um, I have videos for resume quality, I have videos for portfolio, portfolios and portfolio quality, how to at least generate the appearance of experience on your resume. I have some videos about that. Um, I have videos about this and I didn't make videos about this appearance. I just mean like you're, you know, being the best version of yourself that you can be like grooming and wearing appropriate clothes when you're doing your Zoom interview and stuff like this. But as far as these pillars go, like these are the most difficult ones to raise and you'll come out of the program looking pretty decent in this area. And then all you have to do is like raise up these other areas and then you can kind of start applying to like cloud support support engineer, Azure support engineer, cloud engineer, like these type of jobs. And especially if you make your, your scope wide enough, that is like the jobs you're willing to do and like your geographic location and apply to like all the remote jobs and like be flexible with your pay, it it's going to really decrease the amount of time it takes for you to find a job. I'll go into this like whole pillar thing in like another video, but all in all, like the the cloud track, it was good before and I, I think it's much even better than it was because it offers the three specializations and I, I really like Azure and I like the certs in the Azure one. AWS one looks good too, but I don't use AWS. So, and then one more thing I got to say, like you, you're not required to finish the degree before you start job hunting. You can take a few classes and maybe get a couple of certs under your belt, maybe like AZ 900 and then AZ 104, the, the admin one, and then nothing's stopping you from just applying to jobs like immediately at that point. Cause you might get a nice cushy job after like four to five months of WGU and then you start making money and then you just take your time doing the rest of the degree, getting money and experience at the same time. So that's just something to consider. Thank you so much to all my patrons for supporting me in the channel. I really appreciate it a lot. Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions about this degree track or my job or anything else, I'll be more than happy to answer them. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.